Good morning. It is day eight, I believe. Um, today I'm going to be doing some work on the rudder. I've j been jumping around a little bit. I have some parts on back order um, for the horizontal stabilizer and the vertical stabilizer that um, prevent me from completing that work. Plus, um, in this tube right here, I have a bunch of replacement parts for the horizontal stabilizer, the front spar and uh, sort of anything connected to the front spar other than the skin. I uh, learned a lot of lessons while screwing that up. Fortunately, it wasn't very expensive. So once I get this stuff done, I'll, I'll move to this today. Um, what I'm doing with the rudder today is um, riveting on the stiffeners. I worked on these yesterday. They come maybe four to a piece and then you cut them down um, where indicated and then make some uh, cuts to taper them and round the edges, clean them up, uh, deburr. I'm gonna, I primed them, let it sit overnight, um, as well as the inside of the rudder skin. I don't think I'm gonna prime everything, but um, it's a good opportunity to learn um, right now, uh, just sort of the overall process of doing these things. So today I will be uh, dimpling the skin and all of the stiffeners and go ahead and rivet those on. Um, and then later I'll get back to um, redeeming my sins um, on the horizontal stabilizer front spar. So stay tuned for that. This work was all done on Christmas day, 2023. And uh, it was all about learning hard lessons about the right and wrong ways to dimple and how to recover from the mistakes. And then later on, get into some back riveting and some more mistakes. Uh, here I'm setting up my DRDT2 dimpler in the little um, rig cradle, I guess you could say, uh, that sets between my two workbenches so I have a nice flat surface to work on. Um, in the first portion of this, you'll see me wrestling with the skin quite a bit trying to um, put the male dimple die on the bottom of the dimpler and come up through the bottom of the skin um, ultimately and I didn't catch the exact moment in here but there's a point where I'm sort of struggling to hold the skin open as I get closer to the the bend in the skin where I need to dimple those holes and it kind of slipped on me and I made a little figure eight hole um, <laughs> You know, I've seen this happen to other builders quite a lot. And I thought when I was working on this, I don't see how that could possibly happen. And then bang, it happens, uh, which caused me to rework the way that I use my dimpler. Um, and the other thing to note is that you see me dimpling the stiffeners using the DRDT2. Later, I will learn that using the pneumatic squeezer for anything that it can reach is much easier than using the big thing. The big thing is best suited for um, for just the long reach stuff that you have to do on uh, big sheets. But if you can reach it um, with a squeezer yoke, it's much uh, easier. Uh, so anyways, um, as it turned out, I actually had two rudder skins and so I could afford to make a couple of mistakes when my, uh, kit was shipped to me. Um, the rudder skin had a little, uh, sort of a superficial bend, um, a little bit of damage. And I decided I, I didn't want to start the, the kit with a damaged piece. So they sent me, um, a replacement for that. And in this instance, I ended up using, uh, both of them. Um, you'll notice uh, coming up here that there's a point where I sort of change my method of uh, dimpling the skin. And you'll also notice that the skin I'm dimpling is suddenly not primed on the inside. Um, that's when I <clears throat> discovered or uh, made the figure eight hole and decided to go to my backup skin. Um, and at the end of the video, the very end of the video, um, I'll mess up my backup skin and have to revert to the first one. Um, I was really um, 
unsure about how far I could open up that bend on the trailing edge of the rudder. And so I was being kind of cautious about getting uh, to those uh, holes nearest to the trailing edge um, with the dimpler and that was a source of my problems. So what ended up happening with the second skin that I started working on, um, when you see me get into the back riveting, uh, process, um, is that I decided that the, uh, the, the rivets that are closest to the trailing edge, a couple of them, I didn't feel like I could open up that bend enough to get in there and, get the rivet gun vertical for back riveting so I decided I would buck those and that didn't go very well and I put some pretty ugly dents in the skin um, and perhaps I'll even uh, pause for a little highlight <laughs> maybe not um, <laughs> where you can hear me uh, dropping some choice words when I realize the damage that I've done uh, in the end um, I can tell you now in the future that everything turned out well the rudder looks great um, with the original skin um, making a repair to a figure eight hole that you've created really isn't that difficult it's a matter of um, cleaning up the hole and then fabricating a little doubler to go behind the hole um, and putting a new hole on either side sort of straddling the original hole the caveat being that you still have to be able to make sure that the new holes that you create still have adequate edge distance um, from the adjacent holes, which it did. And when I get into a later video, I'll show you a little bit of that process and how I put it together and what the result was. Um, back riveting, um, we haven't really talked about it. It's a, in terms of using a rivet gun, it's a pretty easy way to go about it. So if you have the ability to do it, um, you actually rivet, uh, apply the rivet gun to the uh, shop head and set the work material on a steel plate and that would be the backing so what you see me doing through here is um, placing the rivets in the dimpled holes the countersunk holes and then putting tape over them so then I can lay them down on that uh, back riveting plate and then apply the rivet gun to the opposite side um, that works really well it uh, if you don't have your rivet gun set properly it's pretty easy to um over squeeze or over rivet them overdrive the rivets but overall um you get pretty good results with that and that tape that i'm using is actually some tape that i bought from uh, a hockey supply store but it works pretty well for this purpose it's a it's a sturdy tape that actually removes pretty easily so uh yeah this was a rough uh christmas day with um a bunch of mistakes made but uh now being a few months further along those are all actually pretty um turn out to be pretty valuable lessons um and i feel much more confident um that i can recover from errors that um will invariably occur so anyways that's uh rudder part two stay tuned for more